you want to see what this looks like, yeah. Blech. If you want to see what this looks like, it looks just like soy milk that you've made on the stove. It smells just like it as well. You can actually use this for tofu as well as yuba. Konnichiwa, Pat Tokuyama here at All Day Like a Shark, where I share my Japanese cooking videos once a week showing you how to make Japanese food. Today what we're going to be doing is a little product review and demo. This is the Soya Joy G4 soy milk maker. It's also not just a soy milk maker, it also makes nut milks as well as rice milk, oat milk, and grain milk, porridge, as well as raw juice and beans. My primary reason for getting this Soya Joy G4 is for the soy milk. All right, so before we get started, I have a couple liters of water right there. In terms of what you get when you open the box, you get this little Soya Joy G4 device. It's a pretty good size. You see my hot water pot here, the Zojirishi. It's very similar. Just a little bit smaller. This device holds about 1.7 I believe is where you're supposed to fill it. So if you open it you'll notice that the inside is all stainless steel, very well made, and then it has a little stainless top as well as a blade which is going to be pureeing the beans or whatever it is that you're going to be putting in here. There's a little electrical contact there and on the top so you got to be careful with that. You don't want it to be wet when you're actually using it. Seems pretty well made. I haven't had it too long but it's been pretty satisfied. I was actually pleasantly surprised when I first used it. It does a pretty good job of making soy milk. It eliminates a couple steps from the soy milk making process. So if you are all about convenience, efficiency, this might be something worth considering. So on the top there's like five buttons and these are all the different things that it does. If you unbox it, this is what it comes with. It comes with a manual, comes with a strainer, comes with a scrubbing pad, a pound. This might be a half pound of soybeans which is just enough to fit into this little cup and this cup. So this is the straining container. I actually don't use this. I prefer to use my own nut milk bag and Pyrex but if you don't have that this will be all you need to get started. So with that let's go ahead and get to work and put the uh, soybeans in here. So this side really quick. Okay, so first thing that you're going to do, I actually have some pre-soaked soybeans. I actually de-skinned these already. So this is going to be one cup of dried soybeans that have been soaked and de-skinned. So I freeze them. I do a batch and then I freeze a bunch and then that way I don't have to do it all over one by one. It helps me save time. Highly recommend it if you don't do that already. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in and this plug-in cord is right here and all we need to do now is we're going to add in about six cups of water. So that's going to be about 1400 mils roughly. So there's four cups. I like to be exact. And then right up to the 400 mil mark. So there's 1400 mils. And on the inside, there's a little gradation for 1500 and 1700. And the same thing right here. So right now, the level's a little bit low since we put in only 1400. But once we add these soybeans in here, it'll be above that minimum level. Also, there's a little sign here you don't want to go over the max. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, it might spill over, which would be no good. So in my experience, the taste is somewhat subtle if you leave the soybean skin on versus take it off. I think depending on what you're going to be using it for, if it's going to be for drinks like smoothies and so on, you might not notice. But if you're making something like tofu or you're going to be drinking the, uh, the soy milk by itself, you might notice the difference in flavor. So it does take a little bit more effort to de-skin the soybeans, so it might be worth experimenting yourself to see if that's something that you actually think matters to you. So there is my one cup of soaked soybeans. I have 1400 mils of water. I'm gonna put on the cap here and then it's already plugged in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the soaked soybean button and then this will do all the work for us. So see you back in about, I think 20-ish, 20 to 30 minutes is about how long it takes to finish the soy milk and it heats it up, it purees everything and all you gotta do is strain it out. And then we'll have okara, which is gonna be used for anything from baked goods to savory vegetable appetizers, hambagu, Japanese style hamburger, and many other things. And then we'll also have our soy milk, which we can use for anything that soy milk is used for, like ice cream. Uh, all right, well, there it goes. So I'll see you back. What's up, guys? So it's been about 20 minutes-ish, and my Soy Joy G4 started to beep, which means that it's done. And if you didn't hear the beep for whatever reason, then you can just look at the little light on top. There's a little keep warm light, which is illuminated when that happens. So be careful, because the side is hot. What we're going to do now is strain out the soy milk, and then I usually put it into a canning jar after it's done. So this is my nut milk bag, and I'll use a spatula to press out the soy milk because it's hot. So we're going to use two. You want to make sure to get this rinsed right away, otherwise the soy milk is going to get stuck to it, which you don't want. It's going to be more difficult to clean, so I usually just rinse this off right away. Just make sure that it stays wet. And go ahead and unplug this. If you want to see what this looks like, it looks just like soy milk that you've made on the stove. It smells just like it as well. And uh, one last step, right? Dealing with hot containers and pouring and straining and so on. Go ahead and strain this out. All right, so there's a good amount right there. I'm gonna go ahead and strain some of it so we can put some more liquid in here. 
You can drink this right away if you want. Once it's a little bit cooler, you can add some sweetener if you want, some cinnamon if you want a spice or vanilla extract, for example, if you want a vanilla flavor. Question of the day, have you ever made soy milk before? And if you have, did you do it on the stove? All right, so what we have in here is okara. We're gonna go ahead and pour the rest of this in and then we'll strain everything out. D definitely don't wanna waste the okara. It has a lot of nutrients and fiber in it. So there's nutritional value there. If you're lucky, you can actually get it at a market, Japanese market, but I haven't really seen it sold here where I live in Orange County. So same thing with the uh, stainless steel container. You wanna make sure to keep it wet. Otherwise it's gonna get crusted and more difficult to take off or clean. So make sure that you get this wet right away. That's one of the reasons why they give you that little scrubber thing in the kit. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and put the rest in here and then clean it up. And then what we'll, we'll be left with is okara and soy milk. Okay, so this needs to be pressed a little bit. Let's fill this up all the way. And the good thing about using a nut milk bag is that you can twist it and then force out the liquid as opposed to just using a strainer or a cheesecloth. It's a little bit more messy. You can see that there's definitely a lot of liquid stuck in here. So that's why I always press it out like this. So some of the uh, pros and cons of this Soya Joy G4 machine, soy milk maker. I would say the pro is that it takes out a couple steps from the stove process. So if you've ever made soy milk on the stove, usually what you have to do is you start with soaked beans, then you'll puree them in your blender, like a Vitamix, for example. Once they're pureed, then you're gonna transfer it to the stove and cook it for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then you'll strain it. So this takes out that blender step, so there's a little bit less transfer required. And in my opinion, it's totally worth uh, that uh, time savings there. And and the other thing is that you don't have to really worry about it boiling over. When you do it on the stove, if you're not careful, your soy milk might boil over and make a mess and it's really hard to clean. So it takes out that step. It's very easy to use, like you saw. All you have to do is after you add in the uh, soybeans, the soaked soybeans, some water, all you do is push a button and about 20 minutes later, you'll have soy milk. It's made of stainless steel, which I like. It's not gonna really impact your food flavor so much. It shouldn't. So far, I'm pretty happy with it. I guess some of the cons, it's definitely a specialized appliance. If you already have a blender, you know, may not necessarily be the best addition to your kitchen. It basically does the same thing. It just has a heating component to it. Another con would be that the uh, capacity is somewhat limited. So like I mentioned before, it only does about 1700 mils max. So you can only do just about a cup, no more than really a cup of soybeans before you're at capacity. Otherwise it might spill over, which you don't want. Stuff that it came with, I don't know if it's really the highest quality, so I don't use it. I think that's another valid con there. So some tips for using this thing. I would recommend that you soak your beans ahead of time. I think the texture is a little bit better and also de-skinning your soybeans. And I can't really speak to the other uses for this machine because I got it specifically to make soy milk. If those are other things that you make, beans, nut milks, other types of milk, it's definitely a good thing to have. All right guys, so anything that I forgot to say, I'll put in the uh, description below. If you got any questions or comments, just let me know. This is how I make my soy milk with Soya Joy G4. That's gonna be it for this video. If you wanna see more videos like this one, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the alarm bell for notifications for when I post new videos. And other than that, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye bye. One of my other videos I was pressing and my spatula broke. I'm gonna be a little bit more gentle with this one. Bamboo is not the strongest thing to press against. So if you're gonna be pressing with force, you might wanna use some stainless steel, something more strong than this bamboo spatula so that it doesn't break on you.